Welcome back to Hatter Chatter. Finally. And like the title said, most people will click away from this in the first 30 to 90 seconds. But that's okay. It's not for them people. It's for the people that stick around. I'm about ready to tell you where I've been, why Hatter Chatter stopped, why Hatter Golf is starting, and I'm going to give you the uncut, real story of what it's been like becoming the Hatter for the last two years. I will say a lot of this is going to be very personal information I'm going to put out there, but I think there's a reason I'm supposed to say what I'm supposed to say. I'm going to try to hold it all the way together through this episode because there's a lot of stuff that's very hard for me to talk about. So let's jump right into it. And I guess the way to start this is I need to go back roughly about two years ago. Two years ago was the happiest I'd ever been in my entire life. Sounds crazy. For y'all that don't know, I'm 42 years old. So to say that two years ago was the happiest I'd ever been in my life is kind of strange. I understand. So I take you back to that moment. Right before then, I decided to start a TikTok. Pretty much just making poker content for myself to watch my journey. I never had dreams of being a professional player. I worked a full-time career job. I still have almost four, a little less than four years till I can retire, as most of y'all know, if y'all been watching my journey. So, around that time, like I said, I started a TikTok. I never thought I would get more than 100 people, and I figured the people that follow me would be local people who would kind of like troll me and just have a good time with it. Little did I know where that decision would take me. At that point, the Mad Hatter started to take off. The first few videos, I just wore a hat like this one, just a regular little ball cap. But I always had a thing about top hats. I got the purple top hat, and that's when I started to meet people. And I met a lot of great people in the beginning. The Froggies, later on Turkey, Sudit, Shu, Yucko, all these great people. Le- further down in my journey, I met Nitwit and 2X2L, and I don't want to leave no one out. Pekka was there. from. I met a guy from Sweden through all this. Around that time, I had to go to Vegas and I donned this top hat. This top hat really changed everything. It made me stand out and a lot of people started to recognize me. So around this time, my brand, my character, me, myself, started to gain a bigger and bigger following and more and more doors started to open up to me that I did not ever think was possible. Also around this time, me and my wife had been married for a few years and we were struggling to have a child. We decided to look into fertility, help, and treatments. And luckily the very first time, she became pregnant. Like I said, this moment when we went and I saw the heartbeat for the first time was the happiest I'd ever been in my life. Mad Hatter, the Hatter, was taking off. I never thought I'd be a father ever in my life. I never thought I'd get married until I met my wife. My wife is the greatest gift God has ever given me. So around this time when I saw the heartbeat, for people that have not really followed my journey, I lost pretty much my whole family before I was 30. I spent a lot of time before I met my wife spending holidays alone, and I really never could understand the why. You'll understand that I'll talk about the why a lot in this episode, because I don't understand the why, and I'm trying to figure out the why. And maybe that's why I'm making this video. To be honest with y'all, I knew that I was going to bring Hatter Chatter back. I had to. My story was not over. But I knew I had to come back and tell it all. And it was going to be rough. So, as I say, we go there and I see the heartbeat. I never felt like that before in my life. It was It was so much joy to see the joy on my wife's face. I ended up being a little selfish in the moment, and when we found out how far along she was, I tried to pull up what might be the due date, because I was worried about it messing up my Vegas trip with my friends. I know that sounds bad, but I would have missed it, but I was wondering how close it would be. When I looked it up, it was way after my Vegas, well, two months after my Vegas trip, but the date that popped up when I Googled it was February 8th. For y'all that don't know, that was my father's birthday. I lost my father when I was 17. He passed away at 44. I'm 42. It plays in my mind. Yes, it does, y'all. So in that moment, when I looked it up, I felt it was him or someone bigger speaking to me. I thought they were telling me, in a way, I thought it was him telling me, boy, you've made it. You've been through a lot of struggles. Your life has not been easy, but you've made it. That's how I felt. 
like I said, it was the happiest I'd ever been. When it comes to the Mad Hatter side of it, I was starting to get influencer type revenue coming in and opportunities. And I felt like I was on top of the world. Little did I know the hurricane that was coming. See, in the coming weeks, me and my wife lost the child. In the moment, I didn't cope with it. I couldn't. I had to be there for her. She's the greatest thing I've ever got in my life, y'all. So I was dealing with that. And a couple weeks later, if anyone that's watched my stuff, see me on live streams, a lot of times you see Diggs, a.k.a. Jimmy. Uh, when we ask people, we always tell each other we're brothers. We're not blood brothers. But he's the closest thing outside of my wife that I have as family. He's been there for, them for years and years and years. No matter my good times or bad times, we fight like brothers. We, It's what we do. But he's always been there for me. Around this time, he had his wreck. I've talked about it before. And I'll never forget that morning uh, when I found out and I go and see him in the emergency room. And it was like so scared. I've lost so many people in my life. And I think that's what, with all this going on, I really couldn't, like I never coped. It was just like, I had to be there for my wife. I had to be there for my brother. So, and, and a part of me said, well, she got pregnant the very first time we went to the fertility treatment stuff. So it'll happen again. Don't worry about it. Shake it off. So this was probably about a year and almost two years ago, all this happened. Since then, a lot of the influencer stuff I got involved in, some of it turned out to be really bad. But I met really good people through it. But then they started, some of them got hurt and treated the wrong way. And I took it very personal. So I left someone. The first person that kind of opened up an influencer thing, y'all know who it is. I ain't going to speak of it because they don't even deserve to have their name talked about because they're just bad people. Whether they, whether they believe it or not, in their heart, they know they're doing wrong and doing people wrong. But that's sort of what the poker community is on some levels. There's so much bad out there. And I'll get into that as I go along. So I left that because I didn't want no part of any badness. I wanted the hat myself to be positivity. I've had so much negative in my life. And I've been through so many struggles and hurt. And it really is true. The people that are in the most pain want to bring the most joy to people. And that's what I've always wanted to do, was bring joy to people. I will say over the last two years, me and my wife, she's had two what they call chemical pregnancies and lost both. The last one was a few months ago. This is when Hatter Chatter stopped. Over the last year, I'm trying to I'm trying to like tell the whole story, y'all. So if I bounce back and forth, I'm trying my best. This episode is very hard for me to talk about because I'm admitting a lot of things behind the scenes. But I believe that the authenticity and why people like my stuff is because of this. And also, I want people to understand the struggles. So, like I said a couple months ago, well, it's, well when Hatter Chatter stopped, I think it's been about 60 days ago. We had come to the point where we were ready to give up. And the last time she got pregnant, of course, her hopes get up. And I'll never forget when she got the bad news that she had miscarried again. I saw her crying on the couch. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. And this is hard as a, a prideful man to say. Something shattered in me. I couldn't understand the why. I, I couldn't, no matter what you believe in this world, I think faith and hope is something you got to have. And in that moment, all my faith, all my hope was gone. I'm going to be real. I questioned why. Why, God? Why, why have you took everything that I loved away from me? Why will you not let me have something? I've lost so many people in my life. My best friend in high school died in a motorcycle accident when I was 21. I lost my dad when I was 17. I never had a mom. My only other real blood family I had was my dad's parents, and they were gone before I was 30. So all I've dealt with is so many losses in my life. And it took a toll. It sort of is like poker. When you go in a downswing, and honestly, I'm in a downswing right now if you've been watching the live streams, it wears on you. It's not one. It's, it's when it piles up. Now, when all this has been going on in my personal life, I've tried to hide it behind this, on this camera. And in a way, the Hatter has saved me. The people I've met, because they've kept me going. Whether they knew what was really going on behind the scenes or not, they were my motivation to keep going. 
because I did feel like I was making some differences when it come to people. From when the door opened at the Jacksonville Best Bet, which was one of the greatest doors ever to open up for me, and I was able to bring people, whether I met them here on, t on YouTube or TikTok or on social media or people I've known for years, and I was able to bring them to the live stream and get them on stream, and it was their dream to play on a poker live stream. And to meet them and everything and have people fly from all over the country, drive from halfway across the country to come play with me. Like, I know I'm making a difference, but I was getting blinded because there was so much other stuff going on I didn't talk about. To be honest with y'all, over the last two years, I've probably been cheated, scammed, and just used for probably about $5,000. The poker community can be the greatest thing, but there's also a very dark side. I'm not here to trash nobody. I'm not here to point fingers. I'm just telling you that I believe... Maybe it's just like a lot of gamblers have problems and they, you know, they, they just do bad things. Um, and I think scammers try to go after the poker community. Online poker as a whole is so unregulated and so hard with AI and bots and all this to control. Really the only way to be able to play online and know that it's legit is if you're playing with a group of people you know and you can trust them. Outside of that, Turn on Twitter or X, whatever it's called now, or do any YouTube search about online poker. It's so questionable. So all this was going on. And when you're a poker content creator and you're someone like me that's working a nine to five and you're trying to get some type of, you're, you're trying to build a brain, you're trying to bring in revenue and all this. And when it comes to the poker world, it's so hard because there's not a lot of just cut and dry good out there. And when money monetary value is being at stake whether people are being cheated or not if they can't see it face to face and even if you're playing live it affects people so much and it's it's hard to be in that environment especially someone like me that i don't want like i said i don't want to be a professional poker player that's that has never been my dream my dream was to bring people together and have good times and I love being at a poker table that's why I like the Jacksonville best bet live streams even when I lose I love it because I get on there I'm able to talk communicate and hopefully bring a little bit of joy the top hat is silly but it's who I am and it brings joy and people walk by all the time are like nice hat and I know a lot of people probably think man why are you wearing that goofy hat you look like a clown well that's fine because it brings smiles it brings laugh whether you're laughing with me or at me I don't care you're still laughing it's still joy being brought to you. But like I said, with stuff that was going on in my personal life, and then the bad that I started getting hit with through the poker community, when it come to trying to build a brand, it really all became too much. And to go back to that Sunday when my wife got the bad news, I'm going to be honest with y'all, and I want to take y'all through that week, because that's when everything changed. That's when Hatter Chatter stopped. Even though I was still going on live streams at that time, Anyone that's seen them, I wasn't the same. You could see it all over my face. I was in pain. But just, a lot of people didn't know why. So at that point, for the, the that was on a Sunday that we got the news. Monday morning, my alarm goes off at 5 a.m. Actually, 4 a.m., excuse me. I have to be at work at 5. I got up. I went into my living room to get ready, and I sat down. I couldn't get back up, y'all. I physically could not get myself to get up and go. This is hard to admit. Because finally, it like all piled on me at once. All the stuff I'd never coped with, it all hit me at once. And I physically could not move. My job called me, asked me where I was, if I was okay. I forced myself to go in, and I'm going to be honest with you. I got to my job, and I could not hold it together. I'm trying to hold it together now. All I wanted to do was sit and cry. And as a grown man of 42 that's been through a lot, it's hard to admit that all I wanted to do was cry because I had no answers. I felt like I had no hope and my faith was shattered. Like why, why was these cards dealt to me my whole life? For the next few days, work knew I wasn't right. Luckily, I worked with some great people and they knew a lot of what was going on in my personal life. So they gave me a couple days. 
anyone that saw my TikToks then, I rode around pretty much recapping my life, going down memory lane in a way, trying to lay to rest all the pain I'd been through. Not sure I did the best job of it. Them days felt like a punch drunk fighter. That's how I felt. I'm trying to answer the eight count. There was moments I didn't want to. There was moments I just wanted to give up. I wanted to quit. I'm, I'm no quitter. If I was a quitter, I wouldn't be here talking right now, making this episode. But it shook me. So in the, the days of trying, I got back to work and, and I was still shook and I'm trying to understand the why. Like, God, why, why am I here? What's my purpose? Everybody else's purpose is to have kids and have a family and it's not coming easy to me. Nothing's ever come easy to me. So what is my purpose? I mean, that's all what we're here for, right? No matter what we believe, we're here for a purpose. So what's my purpose? I don't know. I don't understand the why right now. But like I said, in the coming days, I started to go out and play golf with my friends. It was a way for me to kind of get away and kind of clear my mind a little bit. And we'd go out there and we'd have some drinks and play some golf. This is how Hatter Golf started, really. Yeah, I'd made a couple episodes before, but it, it was nothing. It was just me kind of like showing another part of me. So my friends turned me on to something called Bob Does Sports. And kind of a light bulb went off. Everybody that really likes this, and if you're listening this far, it's bigger than poker. Yeah, y'all know me because I play poker, and I make poker content. And you've probably seen me on live stream or not. But most people are intrigued by my shenanigans and all the stuff I do. Well, now y'all are getting it. This is who I am. These are my struggles. I'm not perfect. The person that I portray ain't who I am always behind the scenes. I've been through a lot of pain. I'm in a lot of pain now, to be honest with y'all. To kind of touch back on uh, the situation, I mean, when you're 42... It's kind of late to have kids. But my wife is the greatest thing in this world. And if she keeps on wanting to try, I'm going to try forever. Since all that, we have went back to the doctor. And there's another type of treatment we can do. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. It's super, super expensive. And I've been going through this for so long. We've spent a lot of money trying to have a child. And now this one's even more expensive. And even though I have a great job and they say we got great insurance, it doesn't cover none of this. This is all in their mind, like, I guess, elective or whatever. I don't know. Um, the, the next step is not to put a number out there, but it's about the price of a, a car. And, uh, Luckily, I'm blessed enough that, you know, it, it's there. But maybe poker needs to be put to the side for a little while. Um, I've not played a lot lately because I know that part of my poker bankroll needs to go to that. It needs to be ready for that, I should say. Um, I started the Hatter Golf because it's... A, it's I'm starting it for three reasons, y'all. One... It's a way for me to clear my head and be away from it. There's no monetary swings, really. There's, there's none of that. And it's about me going out there having a good time. And if you've seen a couple of the episodes, you see me out there smiling, laughing, and that's who I need to get back to. Because with everything that's went on in the last two years, I've lost a little bit of that. I really have. I've been hurt in my personal life, and the Hatter's been hurt. So the reason number one that I started Hatter Golf was for me to find joy again because I've lost it a little bit. Reason number two is because it's a way for me to get with my friends, my, my people, and do something with them. And I enjoy that. Reason number three is my brother. And he probably don't know this, but this is to you, Jimmy. Hatter Golf is more 
importantly about you than me. Going back six, seven years ago when I got so deep in poker, you was always there for me. You listened to me talk about hand histories. You, you, I don't know why you were so supportive, but you've always been supportive. If I needed someone to fill a spot on the live stream, you was always there for me. You love poker, but you love golf more. I believe for what poker was for me, golf is to you. I believe Hatter Golf is just a platform for you to reach your potentials. And I'm there for it. And I want to support you. So to be honest with y'all, Hatter Golf's about me going out there having fun. But Hatter Golf really is for my brother to chase more of what his dream is. So y'all stay tuned because I believe... Sooner or later, you will see an episode of Hatter Golf where he breaks par himself. And I do believe that he will get close to being the scratch golfer. And I want to catch it on camera. I want to be there to support him, along with the others. Because there's some others in our group that are pretty good. And we all enjoy it. So Hatter Golf, yeah, it's got the Hatter name on it, but it's about everybody around me. I love to travel. Poker was one of the ways to do it, but golf also is. We went to Myrtle Beach a while back, and it was a great time. Sorry, y'all. I'm trying to hold this together. Like I said, I wanted to come back and kind of explain where, why I disappeared for a little bit from Hatter Chatter. Um, the podcast is going to be different moving forward. I want it not to be just me no more. I want to bring on many guests. I want to talk about many subjects, whether it's poker, golf, sports, just life. I would really like to get some people on here and we talk about the why because I'm searching for it. I think I've covered everything I want to cover in this episode. I do want to thank all the people that have been there for me. Y'all know who y'all are. I ain't got to go through everybody's name. Y'all know who y'all are. Whether we talk once a month, once every two months, or every week or every day. Y'all are the reason the Hatter continues. And I want to end it with this. When I started this, I thought I chose the Hatter. As times went on, I think the Hatter chose me. I don't think the why right now is about me anymore. I believe the why is about the Hatter. Maybe I'm supposed to... Maybe my mission was the Hatter. Maybe it's about me going and touching other people's lives. Because I really don't see any other why right now, y'all. But just know, I ain't no quitter, and the Hatter's going to continue. If you made it this far, and you know people that are going through struggles, and this, this whole episode might mean something to them, please share it to them. If there's good people out there struggling and you need someone just to listen to, that won't judge you, understands how to messed up life, everything ain't perfect, and they need someone to talk to, I'm pretty easy to find. You can find me anywhere, Mad Hatter, Poker, on all the social medias. The door is open. If you're a scammer, don't bother me. I've had enough. With that being said, this is the end of the episode. I love you all and the Hatter family, and y'all have a blessed week. And from now on, let's have smiles and laughs because that's what the Hatter needs right now. He's had enough sorrow lately. Love y'all. Good night.